Say, have you ever wondered how to uh, price a janitorial job? Well, you know, as we scale our business, it's very important for us to, to know how to price because in order to scale, we have to get more accounts, more customers, which brings in more revenue. That just makes sense. So, you know, um, there's a few different ways that we can, that we can price janitorial jobs. Um, one way is by the hour. So you can uh, do a walk through the facility and you can write down uh, the estimated times of, of different areas and have a total time to, a total time to clean. Um, and or you could go ahead and uh, know a production rate based off of uh, previous jobs and current jobs that you're doing. And that will also uh, give you a, a total time to clean. Um, so when we're pricing by the hour, it, that's, we have to know the, the, the time to clean. So essentially what we'll do is we'll use a, uh, we'll just use a formula is all we'll do. Uh, so essentially what we'll do is that we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, determine, uh, the, we'll have the square footage of the facility divided by our production rate equals the, our time to clean. So once we arrive at that, then it's just a matter of taking that time to clean number, multiply it by the frequency of cleaning, and then uh, from there, we would multiply it by 52 weeks in a year, then divide by 12 months. So what that does is that gives us our, our average uh, total number of hours per month. Um, so once we have that, then when we're using the price per hour model, we're just taking our average hours per month, multiply it by our billable rate, which is, it could be, let's say, $28 per hour. And when we do that, we take our total uh, average, our total numbers, uh, hours to clean, per month uh, by our billable rate equals our price point. So, you know, let's say that's $1,500. So $1,500 would be our, our price point for, for the janitorial job. So that's one method that you can use to, to price, a, price a job. You know, another way is to uh, price by the square foot. And again, you know, it's very helpful if you have, uh, have been tracking uh, other accounts and other jobs that you've been doing and know the price per square foot. Uh, it just makes pricing so much easier when we know our production rates and our, and our price per square foot just from tracking stuff. So let's say we know that uh, this, this account's a five day per week account and we know that we typically will charge around 15 cents a square foot for a five day per week account. You know, that's just, that's our history because we tracked it. So we do that and, uh, you know, and our price ends up being X amount of dollars. Uh, so that's our price point. So we're going we're gonna to take... Um, Again, we're going to take the, 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 the cleanable square footage multiplied by our, by our price per square foot equals our price point. So, you know, and that's all great. So now we got a price point for that way. So now we have a price point for uh, by the hour and by the square foot. Now, um, something I want to address is that you're going to uh, come up against people that are essentially just buying business. And what I mean by that is that what they're doing is they're... Um, they're just going in and low ball in the account. They're given a low price uh, just so they can close the account and get the account. Uh, you see that with uh, uh, quite a few cleaning companies. Uh, the, the problem with that strategy is that um, they often find out rather quickly that they're not going to be that they're not going to make any profit on the account and they're going to have to raise their prices. So that's it's not a good strategy. Um, so if we, uh, if we uh, come up against somebody that, that's doing that, um, one thing that we can do is when we're talking to our prospect, we have to ask good questions to unlock if it's price driven. If it's price driven, then we know somebody that's going to be buying the business has a very good chance of getting the account then. It's hard to compete with that. So that's why it's important that you ask a lot of good questions to uncover if it's price driven. So if we, if we uncover that it's not price driven and they're actually looking for quality service, and long-term service, well now, okay, that's, uh, that's a different story. So that's why, you know, we're going to provide value and sell on value, not on price. So based off of that, um, you know, we have our price per hour and our price per square foot. We got our price points. Uh, the one thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that, that, that the uh, janitorial job is uh, profitable. So the, the way to do that is that we need to know our numbers, and when I talk about knowing our numbers, we, you know, we, we need to know the, the cleanable square footage of, the, of the, the location or the facility. We have to know the frequency of service. We have to know the scope of work. 
you know, and we have to know our, our, our other expenses, such as, you know, our labor costs, you know, supply costs, uh, taxes, workman's comp, you know, insurance, and, and things like that. We have to know all those things in order to really know what our, pro our true profit is. Because once we arrive at our price point, uh, we're going to back out all those expenses, and once we back out all those uh, all the expenses that we have, that leaves us with our profit. So, and we want to know, you know, what exactly that number is. You know, either it's a dollar number and or a percentage. Um, you know, and once we arrive at that actual profit number or percentage, that's going to be different for everybody uh, to be happy with. Um, you know, one company may be happy with 35% profit. Uh, you know, for, for this, uh, uh, let's say a 35,000 square foot account, while somebody else might be happy with 25% uh, profit. So it's all relative as to what, what the, the, uh, uh, the business wants for their profit. Generally, what you'll see is when you're pricing accounts, uh, when you're pricing janitorial jobs, usually the larger the account, the smaller the, smaller the margin. So that means that, you know, if we're bidding on a 100,000 square foot facility, well, maybe we're only going to make 3% profit. But again, it's all relative to the numbers. So, you know, if you're billing somebody on a 100,000 square foot facility, if you're billing them, let's say, $12,000 a month, and you're only making 3%, well, you can see, well, it's still a, a large number, you know. Uh, and also the same thing is true is if, if it is a 30,000 square foot facility and you're charging $1,300 a month and, and you're making 35%. Uh, so it's all, it's all really relative. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about your profit. Uh, it's, it's really good to know what your bottom number is going to be when you're pricing a janitorial job. Uh, just, just remember that. You've you got to know what your bottom number is because um, if you do get into a uh, situation where you, you wanna, that you're going to have to negotiate on price, well then you know what your bottom number is already and you know uh, that you're not going to go below that number. Now, something else that will influence your, your price with a janitorial job is if they're um, having you provide, you know, project work or specialty work. I mean, like uh, carpet cleaning, window washing, stripping and waxing floors, or polishing their, their stone floors and things like that. Well, that really uh, uh, adds to the price because what we're doing is we're going into this janitorial job and we're going to price our general cleaning price uh, based off the frequency of cleaning, scope of work, and... Uh, then if they have any additional project work and things like that there, we'll price it as separate line items. So what happens is that you can end up, um, you end up actually uh, making more profit on the total account when you have, uh, uh, when you have a proposal like that to where you're, you're uh, doing a proposal on all the general cleaning plus the project work. So uh, one strategy that you can use to uh, uh, when you're bidding on something like this and you know that you're bidding on the project work or specialty work is that you can probably go in a few points lower on your uh, on your general cleaning number because you will definitely make up for it in your uh, project work. Uh, your project work is typically a higher margin profit and uh, you will make up for it. So let's say if we were looking at the, the total project of uh, let's say we we're making uh, 30 points uh, on the t entire project for our general cleaning, you know, if we add our, proje our project work to it, you know, we can probably add, you know, maybe another 10 points or more, uh, you know, uh, it's really interesting. So that's a strategy that you can use uh, and think about that when you're in a high competitive situation. Um, uh, it's worked many times for me and uh, I've got a lot of accounts that way. So, um, you know, so I think, well, you know, I think that's about it. That's all I've got on that. Um, you know, so uh, make sure that you that you uh, that you comment and like and, and uh, share the video, and uh, hope to see you next time with some uh, some more tips on uh, how to uh, run a profitable and successful cleaning business.